change in a year's time. We're going to put a good lineup out there to win the game. There will be a couple of changes. Um, but the message has been, you know, it was a great start to the week. But there's two games, two hard, very hard games to go. And let's make sure we focus on that. Um, you know, it's the old stupid coaches saying that the next game is the most important. But that that's what we're focusing on. I mean, we're going to take the next game as the most important game. The, the result was so impressive, so historic. I'm really curious how the film study went. Was it that great of a performance? How what, what, how'd you rate it? How did that go? We actually very astute question because there were some times during the game where they were on top of us and caused us problems and so the film session went I know you guys all watched all the goals so we're actually going to talk about tactics because you know everybody saw all the goals because it was all over social media so we did a little bit about what we did well a little bit what we could have done better and then I think I ended on Jimmy's goal because all the guys thought that was the best goal. Yeah, when you score a bunch of goals like that, um, I'm sure that there's a lot of pride in, in the quality of the goals, but there's all, uh, is there also a sense of like not wanting to get into a situation where you're relying on you know, goal losses like that? You, like, or is it every goal is the same? No. I mean, look, I saw your, your discussion about expected goals. Uh, what I would say to counter that is we absolutely try to get the ball into certain areas of the field where we know there's a better chance of scoring. We certainly do that on a consistent basis. It's actually the starting point for you know, our final third movements. But at the same time, when you have the quality of a Freddie Montero, when you have the quality of Raul or Jimmy or Nico against Igris, your expected goals number may not be that high, but we have the talent on our team that we might score more of those golosos than, say, another team has. And that's why I'm very thankful that this club has such tremendously talented players. The Austin to me, uh, a tough place to play, obviously, uh, based on the conditions. Uh, but I'm just curious what you uh, talked to the team about, uh, specifically about this version of Dallas uh, being a pretty uh, young team. Yeah, we did. We, we started the messaging. Uh, it was Sporting KC went there and got a result. It's number one. Uh, number two, you know, we've played them very recently, so a lot of the film, a lot of the stuff that we are going to do is show them what happened here in Seattle. Obviously, we'll take some from the Sporting KC game. But the messaging is, we feel we can go down there and get points. That's that's the message. We saw Jordan out here uh, doing, looks like he's doing more every single time he, he's out here. <laughs> Where, how would you assess his... Uh, I'm going to get in trouble. You guys keep asking me about Jordan. And I might say something that the trainers don't like. Um, look, he, he is ahead of the curve. When the doctors think he's ready to get into full training, it will be a huge lift to the team. And I think that time is coming a little bit sooner than originally anticipated. Uh, on the other spectrum, uh, you know who's injured, continues to be step back, and, and you know, how frustrating is that? And how much more depth could you give us on what's going on with Nuhu? We are taking both Stefan Fry and Nuhu with us on this extended road trip. Uh, they are still in the phase of trying to secure visas for the player uh, and that is a complicated issue uh, but I do know that the club is spending a lot of time and a lot of resources to get him here as soon as possible Yeah. 
I actually like that question because, you know, youth development is such a hot button topic. And I think some of the experiences that our younger kids got earlier this year, like Austin, I mean, that's a tremendous building block. And there might be some young kids on the field against Dallas again. And so what they've learned in Austin will help them now against Dallas. And then as far as some of the adversity is concerned, my, my personal feeling is, you know, adversity is what really makes you as a, as a good human being. I mean, it's easy when your team scores six goals and you're in first place and you're winning championships, you drive a nice car, you have a nice life, that's easy. When you have a little bit of adversity, when things aren't going your way, you're losing games at home, you take goals at the 93rd minute, it tests your team. It tests your team, their mentality, what you do as a coach to try and help them be successful. And I think it's always good to have a little bit of adversity during any season to get you, you know, prepared for the playoffs. Because those are the games where you really need to step up. You rarely or never really take credit for the good, you know, uh, team that you are been able to manage. This week you're part of the uh, Ideal 11 or the MLS Team of the Week. Do you look at those type of things? My mother does. 